hello welcome to today's video so i'm trying out a little bit of a new kind of video maybe this is gonna be like kind of a tutorial kind of like a sewing vlog i want to say i don't know i'm just gonna make it see what happens if you guys have any like comments or like concerns on the format of this video please let me know down in the comments when you're done but today we are going to make a little vest and i found this little thing of fabric at my local fabric store in chatham and it was just like a scrap like it was like the end of a roll right but there's about a little bit over a yard in here and it was half off so i only paid like ten dollars for this thing of fabric and it's so interesting it's like the, this little like camo like dog fabric. I thought, look, this reminds me of childhood. Everything in my home, my little redneck home was this pattern. So it's like nostalgic to me. It's like a little campy. And I'm like, okay, I'm in the store. I'm like, this is $10. I have to get it. It's interesting. It's nostalgic. And I'm like, what, what can I make out of this? I don't know. But I have actually decided on making a vest. Very easy project. Doesn't require a lot of fabric, but I feel like we'll look really cool with this. Look, my my dad, when he married my mom, wore a camo vest to his wedding. So to me, this is just like the epitome of camp. So I'm kind of gonna recreate that vibe. I guess, but like in like a fashion, Pinterest, girly kind of way. So I have these two patterns that I stole from my mother. And of course, whatever pattern I choose, I will show you. I obviously have no idea if they make it anymore, but I will try and find a similar one to link it down below if um, I can, or I will try to find the most similar one that I can. Yeah, let's just get right into making this vest. So I have this pattern here. This is the vest. And then I also have this one. And these are like more, like a more like simple kind of vest. And this is like more dressy. So I'm not really sure which one. I think I'm gonna go with the more simple one. Cause I am, I'm freaking tired of princess seams, you guys. Ooh, the one hour vest. If this takes me an, only an hour, that will be such a slay. The first thing I had to do was to figure out all of my pattern pieces and then cut them out. In the little booklet here, it let me know that I was cutting out pieces four and then six through 10. You don't really have to cut out the paper pieces so precisely, but I hate how they look when they're roughly cut. So I cut along the lines anyways, even though it does take me twice as much time. God, I hate cutting fabric sometimes. Since this cotton was a little heavy, it wasn't so bad, but it just like always makes my back hurt. Like I need one of those giant counters to do it on, but unfortunately I am poor and in a 600 square foot apartment. Now, for a vest like this, we will have facing. And if you've never done facing before, do not be scared. On the pattern piece, it'll say which ones need to have an interfacing. It'll say cut one and then cut one interfacing. Or it's sometimes called fusing too, depends on the pattern. If you have never bought facing, um, it's basically like a kind of fabric with heat activated adhesive on the one side so that your it gives your fabric more structure. You basically iron it onto the corresponding cutout fabric piece. So if you just go to any fabric store and you ask for a fusing or a facing or an interfacing, um, they'll know they'll know what it is and they'll be able to help you out with what kind you need and everything. So once everything was all nicely cut out, I ironed it all off camera, sorry, <laughs> and got to laying out my pieces and interpreting the instructions. Honestly, this vest was pretty to the point, thank God. And I mean, once I laid out the pieces, it was pretty clear to see what I needed to sew. So um, I've actually accidentally cut these two pieces the wrong way. I had to cut it with the print the other way. So I get to recut it, yay. I hate cutting fabric that I have just enough fabric. So first I sewed the side seams and the shoulder seams, which is so simple that it was so calming. Like, can I just sew like a straight half inch seam forever? I wish, I honestly wish. Okay, so I'm trying it on and 
It's actually like kind of perfectly oversized. Like it'll be a little bit shorter, obviously. But like, look, I want to be able to wear it over sweaters. And this is like kind of perfect. And then I went to the facing. And I'm so glad that we went through facing in my fashion design one class this semester, or I would have been kind of totally lost. Um, honestly, doing a project like this has made me realize how much I've learned in the past semester alone and it genuinely feels so weird to be able to say that I know how to sew now. Like at the beginning of the semester, it was like I've literally sewn like three things in my life. Like I barely know how to work the machine and now I like low-key know a lot, like a lot, a lot. These instructions here are telling me to baste the facing. The basting is for losers, okay? I'm just gonna go for it, okay? We're just gonna make this work. Anyways, <laughs> I basically just sewed the neck facing to the side facing, so just the facing all in one at the shoulder seams. And then I pinned it to the vest, which um, I did along like the matching curve of the vest. It's pretty easy to see once you put them together. The picture instructions on the pattern itself just like suck. Like they always suck somehow. Like it's not hard to make it not suck, but they do always suck. Okay, so now I'm going to understitch the facing, which are annoying me. I hate understitching, but it's not so bad when it's like this open at least. So yeah, we're gonna do that. Also like this is a one hour vest technically. Babe, I've probably been doing this from like when I started cutting the fabric for like three hours now. And this is where we're at. One hour vest, my ass. Anyways, for the facing, you have to understitch it afterwards where you basically just sew the seam allowance that you just made to the facing itself to make it sit flat. So make sure that you're not actually gonna sew like the front piece of fabric so that you don't see the stitch when you're wearing it. Okay, we are now onto the armhole facings and I've never done something like this before and I have no idea what I'm doing and the instructions are confusing so we're just gonna try and figure it out. I brought my Coke Zero to be my emotional support. Let's get going. Okay, it's getting darker right now, so I apologize for that, but I have pinned my armhole facing and um, my camera is dying, so I'm just going to stitch this and then understitch it the same way we did the other facing. And then I'm gonna do the hem and then I will be back. And after that, the vest really started to come together. I was getting pretty excited, but also kind of tired. <laughs> I've been doing so much sewing lately for school, but I just really wanted to finish this project. It's been on my radar since October, and I mean, this fabric is just irresistible. How can I not want to make this? How can I not want to use this fabric? I cannot wait to wear this in my redneck town for the holidays. It literally makes me giddy thinking about it. And I cannot believe I just used the word giddy in an actual sentence. As a small touch, I decided to just tack over the shoulder seams so that I went through the facing at the back. That way the neck facing would stay flat a lot easier and it wouldn't pull up out of the garment while I'm wearing it. Here she is so far and now we're ready to do the buttonholes. So um, I, I looked at the pattern, it didn't really look like there was any marking, so I'm just going to mark them myself. Okay, so for like the buttons, I have two options here. I didn't have very much at Michael's and I wasn't going to make the trek all the way to some fabric stores. So I have these wooden ones and then I also have these, these little green ones. But I'm thinking definitely going towards the wooden ones like these. I don't know. They're a little bit big in my opinion though. I would have wished they were smaller, but like I think it won't be so bad with like the whole oversized look of the vest. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking. In order to make the buttonholes, I kind of just placed the buttons down and I eyeballed where I wanted them. And then I marked the top and the bottom of the buttons. And then I pulled out my ruler to mark the actual line of the buttonholes so that I knew they would be straight and also equally spaced away from the edge of the jacket. I have never used the buttonhole thing on this machine before, so we're going to try and figure it out today. Fun! So, after a little bit of reading and a test swatch, I found out that my machine does the buttonholes all on its own and that you actually should put a button into the foot and it makes the size of the buttonhole based on that. Honestly, technology is crazy cool. I basically just set it all up and then I let it do it by itself, placed at my markings obviously. Once I had all the buttonholes, I marked the buttons in the corresponding spots on the other side and then I got to hand sewing the buttons on. Okay, I think I'm just gonna take it in a little bit, but then it'll be all done and we can do a final try on. Okay. 
Okay, so that is this super cool, lovely little vest. You may notice that um, I have a different background and it's because I'm now currently home for the holidays and realized I forgot to film the try on and the conclusion to this little video. So here we are. And um, I do want to like say this is not a one hour vest, okay? This probably took me four to five hours. I mean, I'm not like an advanced sewer, but I'm sure the people who want to make this vest are not either. But that was also start to finish. Like when I started cutting the fabric to when the last button was on, okay? It, that was start to finish. That's not bad. Like that's a one day project if you want to use up your whole day. I'm so happy with the result. I think it looks so fun and cute and cozy and it just matches my surroundings. I mean like look at me next to this fireplace. The vibes are perfect, okay? So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you like and subscribe down below. Let me know um, if you like this video, if you liked kind of the format of it, if you want it to be different. I want to know. And yeah, so I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.